Hi, my name is Kevin Oliveira, and I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager for Data Security Solutions here at Forcepoint. We recently launched Forcepoint Classification, powered by Git Visibility. It's an innovative product that leverages artificial intelligence and machine learning to deliver unparalleled accuracy for securing data with Forcepoint DLP and Forcepoint 1 integrated DLP. In this video, Mark Bloomsma, consulting sales engineer with Forcepoint, will be demonstrating how with just a few simple steps, um, how easy it is to apply Forcepoint classification with Forcepoint 1. Mark is going to show how to set up a simple classification scheme and how to take the classifications and add them to the Forcepoint 1 system to apply the policies based on the classification. Here's Mark. So on my screen, you can see uh, our Forcepoint 1 platform. I've published the um, classification and um, DOP management system uh, behind our uh, Zero Trust Network access controls to make it a little bit easier. So if I open my Forcepoint classification platform, um, I'm already logged in, so it goes fast. Normally you will get a, a login prompt um, and I can click configuration. So there is a simple configuration wizard that we need to go through, which asks you first, which compliance uh, tags will the end users be able to select? So there is a, a set of predefined uh, compliance regulations in there ranging from ITAR, EAR to GDPR, HIPAA, PCI. So I will leave it based on the GDPR, HIPAA, and PCI, uh, mainly because I'm based in EMEA. So when I click next, um, there is another set of classification, um, which are most commonly used for default, more commercial uh, companies, organizations, and people that use and integrate with Azure uh, information protection. I will stick to the commercial uh, uh, setting. So the next, which plugins do you want to enable? Uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, and so on. I will select all of them. And then it will start asking you what to do. So do you want to force classification? Do you want to warn people or just log and ignore and leave them to, uh, al and allow them to not classify data? I will leave it to warn. Uh, same when you go printing, uh, I will warn them, will you allow users to lower classification or not? Um, I will. Um, auto classification, so what's the default classification? I will leave that to public, um, but you can also pick one of the others. Next, you can specify on the office applications, what do you want to do with headers, footers uh, and watermarks? So I have enabled them all. Normally, you would probably have either a footer or a header and not both. So let's keep it with footers and I will leave the watermark uh, present. Now you can modify these and, and tune them to your liking um, as you go along. Then Outlook policies. So what do you want to do uh, when people uh, send emails? Do you want to warn them, uh, force them, uh, block them for sending unclassified files? Um, so on, do you want to inherit classification from uh, um, files that are classified? So, so if somebody adds a classif classified attachment, will the email automatically inherit uh, that classification? Yes or no. And again, what is the public uh, classification? Then next you define on your Outlook what the visual tagging needs to be, headers, footers again, obviously no watermarks on an email. Um, and then you can decide based on the labels, which domains uh, people can and cannot send emails to, right? So for public, most of the time you will allow everything, but once it's an internal email, you may might want to warn them when they start sending emails to uh, public email domains like Gmail or Hotmail. Eh? And the same goes for confidential emails and highly confidential emails. And then you're done. It's, it's that simple, right? You have your you have you have set up your uh, compliance or your uh, classification policy, and I have a look at the policies. There is a policy for, for example, Google Workspace, where you can see there is a 
policy set for the force point classification GDPR PII to be blocked. And if correctly configured, you can even apply DRM to make them read only. Um, and you can apply a invisible watermark or a watermark if you'd like to. So this is as easy as it is to apply this policy, for example, just download. You can also, of course, uh, control uploads if you want to. You can use this in Google Workspace, but in any application that has been uh, published. So there should be something set up for Office 365 as well. So as you can see, uh, that policy is exactly the same. And it's that simple uh, to integrate.